Hi, my name is Michael Scum, and I'm going to start my speech off with a story. Uh, this is reported by Robert Waters. Two masked gunmen burst through the door of Tiffany Bibb's home. When the mother, who was holding her baby, attempted to dial 911, one of the robbers knocked the phone out of her hands. Then the assailants forced the four occupants of the house to give up their money and jewelry. As they were leaving, the intruder snatched Bibb's baby away from her arms and ran outside. Gerald Lamar Beverly, a visitor in the home, grabbed a handgun and followed the robbers. The assailants placed the baby on the porch and began shooting at Beverly. The visitor returned fire. When the police arrived, Beverly and an armed neighbor were, were standing over the body of Mika Kava Townsend. Beverly was not charged, and there have been no more home invasions reported in the Chattanooga since January 12th. This brings me to my claim. Limiting possession of guns failed to decrease crime. First, countries with gun restrictions continue to have high crime rates, and access to weapons is necessary for self-defense. Now, countries with strict gun laws limiting possession of guns lack evidence of any reduction in crime. According to Gary Mauser, a professor at Simon Fraser University, and he studies crime and firearms, the Australian government made sweeping changes to the firearm legislation in 1997. However, the total homicide rate, after having remained basically flat from 1995 to 2001, has now begun to climb. While violent crime is decreasing in the United States, it is increasing in Australia. Over the past six years, the overall rate of violent crime in Australia has been on the rise. For example, armed robberies have jumped 166% nationwide. In England, all handguns were banned in 1997. Yet, in the 90s alone, the homicide rate jumped 50%. And according to author Angela Valdez, California raised the waiting period of sales of handguns from 5 to 15 days in 1975. Now this has been decreased to 10 days recently. They also passed an assault weapons ban in 1989, and in 1990 imposed the waiting period all, also on rifles and shotguns. However, the state's annual homicide rate remains an average 34% higher than the rest of the country. Maryland imposed higher restrictions on firearms, firearms also, and their rate is 46% higher, percent higher than the rest of the country. Majority of handgun owners also buy them for self-defense. This is a consistent claim by handgun owners. And access to weapons is necessary for self-defense. Violence is high and police protection is not guaranteed. Uh, I can guarantee almost everyone here has seen some kind of violence, uh, either whether it be a fight or some other crime, and that the police did not, were not there. And according to policepay.net, there is about two sworn police officers for every thousand citizens. Uh, and in the city of Los Angeles, it's one for every thousand. So that's pretty frightening. Mm -hmm. <sighs> some facts by James D. Argesti and Reed K. Smith. In 1993, National nationwide survey of 4,977 households, so about 5,000 households, found that over the previous five years, at least 3.5% of households had members who had used a gun for self-protection or for protection of their property at home, uh, work, or elsewhere. And applied to the U.S. population, this amounts to 1,029,615 such instances. So basically, uh, a survey of 5,000 houses shows um, that inferring the U.S. population over a million people use a gun for protection every year. And at least 0.5% of the households had members used a gun for defense during a situation in which they thought almost certainly, someone would almost certainly would have been killed if they had not used the gun for protection. So uh, using this to the U.S. population, that's about 162,000 people who thought if they had not used the gun, someone would have been killed. So uh, in conclusion, Countries and states with restrictions on guns have no evidence in crime reduction. This we saw in Australia with high gun control, and uh, they still have some of the highest crime rates. England and their uh, England's restrictions and their crime is still uprising. And then California and Maryland, both with strict, the strictest, probably the strictest gun controls uh, in America, and they have some of the highest homicide rates. And then also, civilians own guns or are used for self-defense, as we saw in the first story and is necessary for protection because there's just not enough police officers to protect every situation. So I'll finish with the final question, and uh, that's if a robber is going up to two houses, one he knows they have a gun, and one he knows they don't have a gun, which one do you think he's going to rob?
All right, the opening story is uh, nice to set up the controversy. You've got a good visualization that's going on there. You've got a clear statement of what your proposition is going to be. There's a little bit of a layout of the secondary points, but they're not internally signposted as clearly as they should be. Uh, the first section that has all of the information about Australia and England, and we've got some statistical information about the differences, and then you've got all the state-by-state -state comparisons, uh, you want a source citation on that. You had source citations on some of the later information about about the police ratios and uh, the uh, crime ratios there. So I, I'm sure there's a source that that came from, but I didn't think it was very clear, especially on that first point. Um, on the one study about self-defense, I think it's an interesting study. The nationwide inference seems to be a little problematic, though, because uh, let's take the uh, claim that uh, is being made that they thought that somebody whose life would be threatened. Let's assume for a second that, in fact, that was the case. It would sound like that would mean that there would be an extra 162,000 murders each year or deaths as a consequence, which would be, you know, I'd have to do the, I'm doing math in my head, something I promised myself I would never do. You know, since, since the number of murders using handguns currently is at something like 16,000 a year, was at a 10 time higher rate. That seems to be an awfully big jump there. So I'm not saying that the study is automatically problematic, but I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking they're making some huge inferences off that that um, I, I, you know, they, they undermine your credibility instead of enhancing your credibility. And I thought if you went with the first part of the study, you were better off on that. Uh, you did a nice job presenting to the audience. I have thought you had a very good summary of your argument. And then you've got a nice exit line also that reminds us of the point that you started off with. So I think that's an effective way of presenting your argument. All right, thank you.